today on Family Matters. <laughs> she rules the house. It's Amelia's way or no way. Everybody bowed down to money because she'd just either kick you, spit at you, headbutt you. I'm not the mum. I'm what not the adult. You? I'm a doormat. I have failed as a father. I've failed. I've, I, I took the old man up and I've failed. Ah, oh, Louis! You have not been there emotionally. No, that's why you I'm here. You have been completely that's why I'm detached. Here. But I can forgive the affair. What I can't forgive Joe is that he walked out on the children. So you can't move on from that? I can't. Arthur. Oh, he gets so violent with me that he bruises me. <laughs> he scores me. <laughs> why do you allow yourself to become the punch bag because I don't know how to teach him not to do it. Martha. What about this excluded from school? I mean, he's excluded from school. He's only five. Do you feel sorry for him? Yes, because I'm his only parent and I, I feel responsible for that. If you think you've got a problem now, yeah, I, do. I don't even want to imagine what it would be like in two years' time. Neither do I. the show my first guest Trisha contacted the show to get help because she says that since her husband Andrew walked out on her and their children last year their eight-year-old daughter's behavior has spiraled out of control and Trisha is desperate for help to bring her family back together and also teach Andrew how to be a better dad to their three children my name's Trisha Guest We've been married seven years, we've got three yeah, children, Lisa 16, Bradley 13, Amelia. Amelia 8. I'm having problems with Millie's behaviour. <laughs> she rules the house. <laughs> it's Amelia's way or no way. It's very much whatever Amelia says goes. Well, that's me. Oh! You try putting her to bed, she'll swing off the bed. <laughs> She'll throw things about. <laughs> you try telling her off, she just gives you back chat. Two seconds, that bed. Two seconds to get in that bed, Millie. Get to bed! Get to bed! She'll spit at me. She knows what buttons to press to wind people up. Cranky bitch! Cranky bitch! And she's very, very good at doing it. Ow! I'm a nervous wreck. I'm constantly tired. I've got constant headaches. I'm not chasing <laughs> you. do you want, Millie? I sit and I sob my heart out on night because I'm just totally exhausted with everything. Welcome, Trisha. Hi. Not easy to watch. And you've been living like this for years. Can, can you give me some history? Can you talk to me about how you got yourself to this place right now? Um, Amelia's always been a difficult child. Um, ever since she was little, she's always been wanting to be the head of the family. Um, Andrew's never ever been there. He's never brought Millie up. Me and Lisa have brought Millie up. That's my 16-year-old. Um, and it's just got gradually got worse over the years. And then it sort of escalated when Andrew walked out on the family last June. But he didn't just walk out on me. He actually walked out on the children. The children saw everything when he walked out the door. And he actually swore at Amelia when he walked out. Let's just go back a little bit here. So you're saying Amelia was always a difficult child yeah. and she wanted to rule, yeah. rule roost. What do you mean by that? Whatever Millie said went, basically. Um, everybody bowed down to Millie because she'd just either kick you, spit at you, hit you, headbutt you. I'm not the mum. I'm what not the adult. You? I'm a doormat. So you feel like a doormat? To Millie, yeah. Yeah. Explain to me now about your relationship with Andrew. Because you said he walked out and the kids saw it and... He walked out eight months ago. OK, and you were together for how long? 20 years. Why? He... What, he had an affair behind my back. What happened? He said nothing physical went on. It was just all over Facebook, but he was trying to start a new life with this woman. Um, I've read some of the messages that were on Facebook. It was very, very hurtful. Very, very hurtful, because all the things he was saying to her he's never ever said to me. What? Um, <laughs> I, you're, you're my princess, you're the girl I've always wanted. Trisha never gives me love. Trisha nev I've never wanted Trisha. I've never been happy with Trisha. You're the woman that I've always wanted. So you, you saw for the first time how Andrew felt yeah. through the letters he was writing to somebody else. Yeah. What about Millie? Like, when, when he swore 
at his little girl before he walked out the door. I mean, what, what, did, you, what did she do? She was heartbroken. She was absolutely heartbroken. She was... Now she won't have anything to do with Andrew. Andrew will say, that, come and give Daddy a kiss. No. And what about, what about Lisa? Andrew and Lisa have never seen eye to eye. Um, in heated arguments, Andrew will turn around and say he hates Lisa. He wishes that she was dead, doesn't want to be around her. Um, and since he's walked out and left, Lisa doesn't have anything to do with her dad. She's given me the ultimatum of basically, either da if Dad comes back, I'm leaving and I want to go and live somewhere else. And, and your relationship now, if he left eight months ago? <sighs> We get on. We have to get on because of the children. I do love him. Don't get me wrong, Joe. I do love him. But when he walked out, he didn't just walk out as my husband. He walked out as my soulmate, my best friend. So you feel like you've, you've lost your best friend as well? Yeah. Yeah. He's never been there for me. He's never, he's never helped me in the house. He, he'd rather be out in his shed and ignore everything that's going on in the house. So really, physically, I brought the children up as a single parent. Um, it's hard work. It's really, really tough. Um, I'd love, obviously, to meet Andrew and your daughter as well. Let's take a look at some tape. Lisa's 16, lovely child. She's my rock. If she finds me upset, she'll sort the other two out. I can't do with Mary. Yay! Look at me! Mum can't do it all on her own. So it's like, if Mum tries to tell Millie or Bally off and don't listen, I've got to then step in. And... Now, Millie, please. No, I want to sleep in your bed. Our family's just like a part, really. Like, it's not even a family. Andrew left the family home last end of June last year. Very, very difficult situation. Biggest mistake of my life. That's why. <laughs> Gone upside down, basically. Mel! Yeah. One. Two. Three. Me and my dad are like, close all and we've like not been since I was little. And it's like he's always there for like Millie and Badly and does stuff with them, but it's like never ever me. It makes me feel as though uh, I'm not adequate as a parent. You know, why am I here? What am I doing? Andrew and Lisa's relationship, they don't have one. Andrew will probably say that he loves Lisa to bits, but Lisa doesn't love her dad. She's got no respect for her dad at all. Thank you for being here, Lisa. Andrew? I just don't know what to say. He's just upsetting that you've never been there for me, like, since I was little. You've always been there for me and badly, but, like, never me. Why didn't you say anything, something like this before? I do tell you all the time, but it just goes through one ear and out the other, Dad. Lisa, how do you tell your dad that you want time with him? How do you feel like he may hear what you have to say? We hardly even talk we to him. We can't talk. Basically, if I say something to her, it's all, shut up, Dad. It makes me feel as though I have lost her as a, as a daughter, and it just it just makes you it makes you want to, you know, get odder and say, now you know, what have I done wrong? Why 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 are we like this? No, but it's that, like everything that's happened in the past. You always bring it up. You wonder why I get upset and everything, but it's like my past that you bring up the past that I don't want to be brought up anymore. And then what you do to mum, how you hurt mum all the time, and I hate seeing mum upset. I hate it. I hate seeing you upset. So why do you make her upset then? <sighs> that person that made that that eight, eight months ago has gone. He has, honestly, he has gone. Where, where did that man go, and where, where was that man? Who was that man? And eight then... months ago, he was stupid. Basically, he got a little bit of attention, took it to another level, and regretted it. We we got into a rut. Twenty years is a long time to be to be with someone, and. The norm, the norm of a, of a day's running, it'll be, you know, I'll come home, uh, be tea, go outside into the shed, doing what I wanted to do. Then it'll be shout, Millie wants to put into bed, right? Go and put Millie to bed, put Millie to bed, come back outside, back into the shed. You never put Millie to bed, Andre. It'd be, I'll be in in five minutes, I'll be in in five minutes, I'll be in in five minutes. But I did no. come in and do it. No, you no, didn't, you because by the time you got in, Right? Mum had already done it. I'd already put her to bed. And then that'd spark an argument because I'd been shouting at you for the last hour to come in and put Millie to bed. Millie has a bedtime routine. And but I you'd haven't, no, I haven't no, been, no, I haven't no, been you there. Haven't, no, I'm gonna step in here. Hang on a minute. Every night you'd come in from work and you'd do it purposely. You'd go out smack bang on tea time or smack bang out on bedtime. So you know that you don't have to come in. So then help. you know that you don't have to come in and help. And then who's it always brought down to? Lisa. Then all I'd get is I'll be five minutes, I'll be five minutes. By that point, Millie's then already getting past tiredness, 
So then Lisa's then having to step in and put Millie to bed oh. because he's still out in his shed. Right, let's, let, let's just see more of this. Let's just see more of this. Well, let's look at the tape. Me and Andrew, I'm not singing off the same hymn sheet. How are we going to sort things out if you can't own up and you can't realise and say to me that, look, hang on, something's gone on, we need to sort this out, we need to stand up and we need to realise and work at things and work at what we're trying to do. Yeah, but I try telling you stuff and you go off in a temper tantrum. All right, yeah, all right. We don't discipline the children. It's one rule for Andrew, one rule for me. Five. We do not have the same views of discipline in the children. I've told she shouldn't have to tell you. It makes me feel frustrated because I'm trying to uh, bring them up to do the right thing. And when they're starting to misbehave. I've told she shouldn't have to watch the telly. Maybe it's on tell you. Let me sort them out, you know, it, it frustrates you, it really does. I'm not. Uh, but I want my tea. No, you said you don't want it now. Get me now. No. no. What's that show you now? No, she said she wanted to eat it, so let's go. She just said she didn't want to eat it. it. For God's sake. Well, who's doing what? Who's on their phone all the time? I know. I'm trying to put discipline into Millie. She said she didn't want her tea. She gave me the plate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then you're going, I'll just give her a tea. If she said she wants it, give her it. No, she said she didn't want it, but she was going to eat it. And then it turned out that she didn't eat it in any case. Still to come on Family Matters. I don't want you back in the family home with Mum. The kids need to be sorted out. The kids need a stable life. The kids how need can the to kids have a stable life if we can't be stable with each other? Do you want a committed relationship together or not? Do you, do, do you discipline the kids? I mean, do you give them warnings? Do you, do you give them expectations? Um, if they're not, they'll get a good hiding. Not a good, not a good, good hiding, but, you know, get a clap around the look or, or a slap around the backside. Um, and I think Trisha thinks that that sort of approach isn't how to treat a child. It isn't how to treat a child. But, but kind of neither is this either. I no. mean, Andrew, just, just look at this tape for a moment, please. I mean... I mean, how, how, how is that discipline, either? Like, Millie's mis misbehaving earlier. Are you on mm -hmm. the phone? I mean, where, where's the interaction there? Like, no. where, where's the relationship? There's not, and that's why we're here. That's why I've, I've, I'm, I'm starting now, and I want to sort things out. Well, starting now, she's eight years old, Andrew. Exactly, I've, I've missed, no, Andrew, I have no. missed eight, eight years. Excuse me, excuse me, can you just... Th this is what we don't want. This is what we don't want. This is why we're here. I want you to be able to say what you feel, but but let's let's do this civilized. Let's do this in a mature yeah. fashion, okay? Judge Karen, please. She's eight, Andrew. Eight years old. You should have been there from day dot. She cries out for your attention. Hotel last night, right? I want a kiss, Millie. No, Daddy. So I made you give you a kiss. Yeah, and that's what no, makes no, no, me, no. That's what makes I'm, me feel yeah, as though I have done wrong. Yeah, but then I made you I give you a wrong. kiss to try and build that relationship back up. And what did she get? You go away, Millie. It's second thought now. Just go away. I don't want to know you. How does that make an eight-year-old feel? Yes, I had to force the situation. Yes, I had to force her to give you a you kiss. You have to force it, though. Yeah, but... And I've realised that now. That, and, and this is the reason why I want to sort things out so that we can get back on track and get back as a family. And from, from this, this moment on, now... Is going to be totally different. Everything is going to be around the family. But you've said it's that going before. to be around the family family life. You've said that before, Dad, and then you've never even made an effort. It's like you said that you tried changing. You just you change for like a week, and then you go back to the same old self again. But I can't. If if why can't you tell me? If I've done something wrong, why can't you tell me? We do try we do. and tell you, but you don't listen. We can't go on as a family if we don't sing from the same hymn sheet. It's like she said on there. If we don't sing from the same hymn sheet. What's the point in trying to discipline your children? Well, there are millions of families that do that separated. Mm. That there are millions of families yeah. who right now work together in making sure that their commitment to their children are done between the pair of them. I, I, I had an opportunity mm -hmm. to talk to Amelia, and, and I'd like you to watch this because I, I think it will be an eye-opener. So, we've come down today because Mum and Dad are going to talk to me about how they can just talk together and get on the same page. 
Well, they usually always argue and yeah. they always uh, mean things to each other. Do they? Like what? Um, like rude words. What, what, what do you mean? Like all the naughty words that young children can't really say. How do you feel like when all this is going on, when they're always arguing and swearing at each other? You know, what do you feel about all this? That it's not fair on all the other kids. You just don't think it's fair that they're arguing so much? Yeah. Cos, like, when we were in the hotel, mm -hmm. they were arguing. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what they were arguing about, but it sounded like my dad was shouting and screaming at it. Uh, and what about your sister? Well, she actually, when it's like when she's nice, she's really nice, but when she's bad, she's evil. What does that mean, like evil? Like what kind of things are evil? Um, making us tidy up. Making you tidy up? Yeah. Never. Yeah. You have to tidy up? Yeah. Never. So, if I today could speak to Mum and Dad... Yeah. OK, to help them as parents, OK, what would I be doing today? What do you think I could do? Um, tell my Mum and Dad to stop arguing cos it really gets on mine, Bradley's and Lisa's feelings. What kind of feelings do you have um... when, when, they, when they get like that? Really sad feelings because I always feel like they're going to break up and Dad has to move back to his mum's. Right. So, the sad feelings, the upset feelings, are because that you don't want Daddy to leave. Yeah. You don't want Daddy to go to his mum's. Yeah. What do you want, Amelia? I just want our family to get back together and it just to work back out. You won't get no truer word. You won't. Then from that little eight-year-old, that's for sure. Yeah, another one that's grown up too fast. I just think one that's got a head on her shoulders mm. and is actually seeing, day in and day out, the same stuff you're seeing every day, Lisa. Yeah. There's, there's not just me that's done wrong things. She's done wrong things in the past as well. You always and bring it's up everything. I know we all bring we always bring up stuff. That's the way our life will be. Minute, it's, it's a fight and winner less shipping. Hang, hang on, I said to you last night, I'm no angel, I'm not gonna sit here and portray myself as an angel. And I'm not I've never said I'm gonna come here and no, do I that. An angel I'm just as bad as probably what you are. I made a mistake a couple of years ago, but I never brought my family into it, what, right? What mistake? I had me and Andrew had split up. We'd had a lot of money worries. Andrew had been out of out of work. I'd had a one night stand, didn't fetch the children into it, me and Andrew worked together. It was a stupid mistake. It was over and done with one night. That was it. Three years he made my life a living hell. And I mean, three years, I was downtrodden. I was insulted in front of the children. It gets to the point where I'd lose my temperature. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't, but I'd throw things in temper. But I'd rather throw an ornament, I'd rather throw a cup than turn around and hit him or hit one of the children. I get my frustration out that way. I've, we've even moved house to get away from this, to make a fresh start to build our relationship back up again. And we were both prepared to do this. We moved into a new house. It was brilliant. And then Andrew goes and walks out in the family. Now, I'm not saying I can forgive what he's done. I, I can can't forgive, forgive myself. I can forgive the affair. What I can't forgive Joe is that he walked out on the children. It... So you can't move on from that? I can't. OK, let's go back to the tape, please. It's going to fall apart. It's majorly... It's, fall... it's fallen apart now. It's. I'm very much let the kids just run riot and I shouldn't because I just feel so low and so fed up at the moment of life. I'll be totally honest, I could walk out the door and never come back. What I want is for my family to be able to get all back together and just like be happy mm -hmm. and like not have any like, well, obviously there's going to be arguments, but like not big arguments and like all living under the same house getting on like a family should. I'm trying my damned hardest to help Trisha be there for her and because of what's happened in the past she's not letting me help her Where did you go? And, and put a bit more structure in and to, to build bridges with her. I'm trying my damned hardest and it just doesn't seem good enough. It's, it's very very tough that I've got no support from anybody. 
Lisa, what do you really want from your dad? I want him to step up and actually be a dad like he should be. Oh, be there for Millie and Bradley because I've never had it and I want them to have it. I yeah. want you to be there for him. So regardless to whether your mum and dad are together, you want a relationship with your dad? Yeah, I do. And it can work, but it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. And for that, you have to put the effort in. Are, and you, are prepared? you prepared to do that? Yeah. If he's prepared to do it, I'll Are you do prepared it. to forgive and, get, forgive and forget? Yeah, as long as you start treating mum right. As long as you start treating me right how you should. I'm prepared now, and I'm prepared to say any, anybody, I've made mistakes, you've made mistakes, right? Let's just put them all behind us and try and work and sort this family out. But... Yes, I totally agree with you. But at the end of the day, Andrew, look at this lass. She's broke down. She's mm. beaten down. She's, she's had grown enough. up too quick. I've she's, had to grow she, yeah, you've had to grow up. You've had to grow up. Why has she had to grow up? Because I haven't been the person that I should have been. She's had to stand up and be me, basically. What does that mean? She's had to help her mum. Do what? Sort the family out. Bring the family up. Doing what? Things that I should be doing. I failed as a father. I failed. I, I, I totally all my hand up, and I failed. And for me, for me, for someone to come on and say that they have failed at something that is so big and so so enormous in a life that they they failed at something that should be so easy to come to, and that that really hurts. Um, Lisa, can can I ask you to to leave now? Okay. And I'm going to carry on talking to your okay. mum and dad. All right, let's talk now the kids are not here. Grow up. Grow up, Andrew. Grow up being the operative word. Mm -hmm. Lisa's a child. She is. OK? A child. She's been forced into situations because you did not step up mm -hmm. as a father mm -hmm. and do what you should have been doing, raising your children. OK? You have not been there emotionally. No, that's why you I'm here. You have been completely that's why I'm detached. Here. It's about the relationship you have with your daughter. Get to know her. Who are her friends? What is she interested in? What music does she like? What fashion is she into? Whether you're interested or not, mm -hmm. get to know your daughter. It's, Make the effort. It's hard, it's hard, me, me being, a, me being a, a, a man in a woman's thing. You know, no, it's it, not. It is. No, it's not. If it was, if it was Bradley, it'd be totally different. No, it's then... an excuse. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. Do you want a committed relationship together or not? Not at this moment. Not at this moment, OK. Things need to be worked out, Andrew. Things have got to be ironed out. And at the moment, every time we have an argument, it's thrown back we at We need to work at this now, then. We do need to work at it, but I don't want you back in the family home at the moment. The kids need to be sorted out. The kids need a stable life. The kids but how need can the be... kids have a stable life if we can't be stable with each other? Because, because you can step up and do what you're supposed to do as a father. And I have to say as well, for yourself, OK, it really is a poor excuse to have put Lisa in the position to have to be a parent because of Andrew's shortcoming. At the end of the day, that young girl should have been able to have the childhood she deserved to have. It's one thing if the pair of you do not want to be together. But for God's sake, the pair of you better grow up and realise that you have children. You have to. Mm -hmm. You can't use that against... You can't use that against the father either. I was adopted as a child. And I struggle with relationship issues. And my children are my world. They are absolutely my world. I, maybe I, 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 maybe I, I don't want to share them. Maybe I don't want to share them. They're my children. Well, then, but then, you, then you, you have to understand that your obsessiveness and possessive behaviour will not foster a nurturing, loving relationship yeah. with their father. Quite clearly, the children are being used in the middle here as a tool, OK? Right now, there has... There is damage that has been done in your relationship, OK? Quite clearly, you are very hurt, very angry, and, and you have to give yourself time, OK, to be able to heal from, from that emotional scarring. And, Andrew, you have some work to do as well. A lot of work. You have both hurt each other. And you will both need to work on that with the mm -hmm. friends and family that you have and yourselves. 
but at play right now, there are children who need you both. Somewhere, Trisha, you're going to need to find a backbone to realise that you cannot expect your daughter to step up and play the role yeah. of the father. Yeah. She's not. She's their sister. And if you keep putting her in that place, then the younger ones are going to resent her. Yeah. They're going to resent her. And you're robbing them of having a sibling relationship. You tell me right now two things that you've learned about yourself that you need to change okay, in order to be the mum that these children need? My attitude towards the children and to let my children grow up. That's and learn to I, say I no. And I need to say no to them. Okay, yourself. Be a father, grow up, stop putting myself first, and um, to say let them, let them be kids. I want you to remember that moving forward because this isn't about doing this, you, you, you. This is about taking responsibility and accountability for what you're going to do to change. Stop blaming each other mm -hmm. and looking at a mirror reflection. Work on yourselves so that your kids can have what they deserve, yep. OK? It's not a fight. At least be amicable for the children. Don't let these kids pay the price because you guys haven't looked at yourselves close yeah. enough. Yeah. Can we agree to that moving forward? Yeah, agree. Thank yeah. you. Still to come okay. on Family Matters. He gets so violent with me that he bruises me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. My next guest today are sisters Jenny and Jane. Jenny contacted the show for help with her five-year-old son, Arthur. I was surprised to learn that Arthur, at only five years old, has already been excluded from school four times. Jenny says Arthur is out of control and she's desperate for help with his bad behaviour. My name's Jennifer and I have a, a son called Arthur who's five. What I mainly need Joe's help with is Arthur's behaviour. He um, all centred around the word no. No. Yes. No. Yes. Not wanting to do as he's told, not wanting to listen, and that can escalate to uh, a full-blown throw-in, hitting and kicking. Oh. Arthur. The majority of the time it is, oh, mummy, you come and do it and you do this for me and you, you get me that bit and it's always led by Arthur. Arthur. Generally, if I ask him to do things on his own, he will eventually just come and find me and he wants to do whatever I'm, I'm doing and he wants to be with me. If he has actually done a drawing at school, if he doesn't, you know, he's not happy with what you said, he'll screw it up and he'll put it in the bin. Jane's my um, middle sister. Jane's opinion in the past is that I have been too soft on him. Arthur is the boss of Jenny's house. Most definitely. Here you go. I do give in for an, for an easy laugh. Prime example would be he can go to bed in my bed rather than his own bed. If Mummy lets you go in her bed, are you going to go to sleep? When she says no, it doesn't mean no. He does as he likes and she doesn't follow through with any punishment. I think if Jennifer was to enter into a relationship, if she was to find herself a partner, I think he'd come in and see the situation, and I do think he would run a mile. I hope she's got what it takes to control Arthur, because otherwise this process isn't going to work. She was definitely burying her head in the sand until this point. It's a case of no, it's his way or no way. Jenny, Jenny, <laughs> what's going on? Arthur's the boss. Why? Just, for, like I say, for an easy life. Uh, I do know how to say no to him, and he does sometimes listen, but it's just got completely and out of, uh, utterly out of control. Are you a single mum? I am, yes. From the beginning? Yeah, from the beginning. OK. Yep. So you've been the main primary carer, or do you have help from other uh, family members? Mainly me, but I do obviously have help from my sister and my mum and dad as well, yeah. OK. And so what do you say yes to? Bedtime. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, if it's a case of he'll go to sleep if he goes in my bed, then it's, yes, you can go in my bed. Um, you know, if it's a case of, oh, well, Mummy, Arthur, please put your shoes on, we need to go. No, Mummy, you do it. No, Arthur, you do it. Ten minutes later, the shoes aren't on. Mummy does it. OK. What about this excluded from school? I mean, excluded from school? Mm. It's only five. I know. I mean, what's going on there? 
Um, I think it's exact, exactly the same at school. Um, it's a case of he doesn't want to do as he's told. Mm. He, he's told to come in, he's told to line up. No, I don't want to. And obviously then it's a case of, well, I, you know, I'll kick off and do whatever it is so I can get to go home. A lot of the time when um, something happens, they'll say, yeah. I want mummy, I want to go home. Yeah. And they'll say, no, no, you know, we're doing this, but they'll try, you know. And he knows that the way he gets to go home, his reward, his reward for kicking off is he gets to go home to be okay. with mum. All right, so give me an average day. An average day in Arthur's life, what, what, what happens? I want to hear all the yeses and the noes and everything else. Um, breakfast, normally it's OK, we get up in the morning yeah. um, and he's, he's fine, he'll get out of bed OK. Um, he'll come down, he also, he, he does his own breakfast. Yeah. Um, helps himself. And he gets out of his own bed, does he? No, he gets out of my bed most oh, of the time. I was just correcting you, Sorry. Then yeah. he gets out of his bed. No, he gets okay. out of my bed. Right, yeah, OK. He gets out of mummy's bed. We have breakfast together, we go and get ready together. Does, does, he, does he wash? Yes. Himself? He does, yes. You don't have to help him there? No. Does he get himself dressed? <laughs> Most, well, 50-50. Depends what mood he's in. If he's in the wrong mood, it's a case of, yeah, Mum will do it just so he can get out the door, so he can get to school. I don't know about this 50-50. What about you? <laughs> I mean, because you're, you're here because you're genuinely concerned for your I sister. I am genuinely concerned. Yeah. Yeah, I'm genuinely... The, the situation, because, I mean, if, it, it, it is getting out of hand. He's getting stronger, he's getting... It's getting more frequent. Mm. He doesn't like the word no. No. At all. No, he doesn't. From adults? No. Not just Jenny, from adults in general. So what, what do you think Jenny's doing wrong right now? Not following it through. Me, no doesn't mean no, as I said on the, How? the tape. How? How? Tell Jenny what you believe she's doing wrong and why she's doing it wrong. No doesn't mean no. I mean... At, at dinner times at our house, if he's there, I'm going to count to three if you don't eat your dinner, Arthur. Arthur, I'm going to count to three. It's time to eat your dinner, Arthur. We're going to go home if you don't eat your dinner. But then you never follow that through either. Get, he gets to stay, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Let's take yeah. a look at the tape. <laughs> Arthur sees himself as the boss of the house. He always wants to be in Mum's bed, never wants to be in his own bed. I, wouldn't, I don't mind having him for the night if I'm required to have him for the night. But it... It would be a late night for me because he wouldn't stop and go to bed. I don't sleep in your bed. I don't go in your bed. Um, when I've tried to put him back in the past, um, you spend half the night. Obviously, it wakes you up by that time. You, you've, you can spend the net half an hour, an hour, just going backwards and forwards between beds because he would just come straight back. There has been occasions where he's not wanted to go to bed and he has emptied his drawers, thrown all of his, his clothes down the stairs and all of his toys down the stairs and he did smash the front door. <laughs> For an easy life, he can go to bed in my bed rather than his own bed. If Mummy lets you go in her bed, are you going to go to sleep? I love your bed. When it's something he wants to do, it's his way or no way. Jennifer's not battling, battling to be in charge. She's accepting he's in charge. Last week we had um, another incident whereby he threw um, a grate off a drain at the children and broke some toys and he has now been permanently excluded. As a result of the permanent exclusion, I have been signed off um, work for two weeks because I can't cope anymore. You asked him to go into your bed. You're standing there while he's throwing stuff at you. Mm. Why, why do you... Why do you subject yourself to that kind of behaviour that's really negative and very, very aggressive? Why, why do you allow yourself to be treated that way by your son? Because I don't know how to teach him not to do it. So what your sister tells you, you, you don't believe? Yes, I do, but it's, once again, following through. It's, you know seeing it through to the end because obviously he gets so violent with me that he bruises me. He scars me. He's been violent with me as well. But why, why do you allow yourself to be put in a it's position a... where you become the punch bag? This is, this is to me what I'm concerned about more than anything. Why, why would you do that? <laughs> 
I have, you know, I've read books, I've watched programmes, and, you know, I've tried everything, time out, taking things off him, um, rewarding good behaviour. But something will work for a short time, for a couple of weeks, and then he just, it doesn't work anymore. So you that's not working. Mm. Why do you find excuses? Why do you think your sister finds excuses? I mean, you know, as he's grown up, he's got more stronger, more powerful. He's he's took more charge. And you do give him for an easy life. You do back down because he does win. It's like you say, they're throwing the toys before mm. bedtime. If you go in my bed, will you stop and go to bed? Yes. Yeah. And he knows that. You know, he, he will carry on until mm -hmm. he gets what he wants. And unfortunately, he's not getting what he wants at the minute. You know, whilst he's been here playing in our children area, he's been as, he's been as good as gold. Mm. Don't take a look. I mean, he's capable yeah. of being able... Yeah, interacting, yeah. playing. Yeah. To interact yeah. and, and to be very sociable yeah. and, and to play mm. with somebody else. Can you talk to me about your ex-partner? Um, he left me while I was pregnant I with Arthur. We saw each other a little bit, but it just, it wasn't going to work. Mm. Do you feel sorry for him? Yes. Why? Because I'm his only parent. And I, I feel responsible for that. So you blame yourself? Partly. Still to come on Family Matters. It's not normal. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you think you've got a problem now, yeah, I don't even want to imagine what it would be like in two years' time. Neither do I. I don't go anywhere. Everything revolves, life revolves around Arthur. I don't have nights out. If you're having to tell Arthur off, the look of disappointment in her face and upset because you're telling her son off. As Arthur gets older and stronger, I would be extremely upset at the, what the outcome might be if he was to take his temper out on her. Well, since Arthur's been born, I've probably had uh, maybe five or six nights off, one complete night off, which was last year. Um, other than that, I've been here being a mum to him, doing the best I can do. When I had my night off last year, um, I missed him terribly, and it wasn't until I knew he'd gone to sleep that I could actually relax. I've no idea what would happen next. I dread, I, I dread to think it probably would be that the two of us part company. That would be the next step. I, dread, I, I don't want to lose him. Um, emotionally, I'm already drained. Um, I have no idea where it goes from now. <laughs> I really don't, because I am just rock bottom. You know, I, I look at the tape and, and, I, and I see you get upset listening to yourself. I, I just feel that you need to ask yourself, what do you want? You know, what, what do you really want? As in, is Jenny the woman, not Jenny the mother right now? That's the question I'm asking you. I suppose time out would be, you know, would be fantastic. Uh, and I think that would probably benefit both of us because obviously we spend so much time together and we do everything together. It's not normal. Do you no. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not normal for your son not to be able to be playing and, and being with other family members and you being so attached. Mm -hmm. So attached. Mm -hmm. It's like you have the separation anxiety from your son. Mm -hmm. How is he going to learn what's right and wrong? How is he going to learn to be social and make friends? Mm -hmm. This relationship is so stifling and smothering mm. because you subject yourself to allowing basically Arthur to blow himself up into this tem temper tantrum and you giving on all the time. It's like you're creating Frankenstein. Mm. The more you pander to his temper tantrum, the more he learns from you that that's how he has to behave mm. in order to get his own way. What's the, what's the number one? issue right now that's totally got out of hand. Control, she needs to take control of him. Is number one, it's tough, it's gonna to be tough, you're finding it tough. Yeah. But you've got to take control yeah. and you've got to which I am it through. obviously trying to, which is why I've... You've got yeah. to take control. It's about recognising that you're shaping that behaviour. There are three types of temper tantrums that a child will have. 
and one is to blow themselves up and get really mean and nasty, okay, for something they desire. And when you give that to them, it teaches that behavior. The second is a situational temper tantrum. They don't want to leave the park. And that's when you start to do things like the speaking clock. You tell them in five minutes, in two minutes, get prepared. It allows him to adapt yeah. because he wants what, what he wants when he wants it. Okay, and he has a very, very aggressive nature in comparison to your very passive nature. Mm. All right, which allows him to overrule. And the second is when they have an emotional meltdown. You have to see which one does he have. Mm. So which one is it? The aggressive. First and the second. Yeah. Exactly. When you're giving it, yes, yeah. we're going home in five minutes. Exactly. He completely ignores you and everything, yeah, doesn't he? he does. So Until it gets aggressive because you've got to take him home. Yeah. So setting up expectations, letting him know that you will follow through, and right now, if inside you feel scared mm. of him becoming so aggressive, fake it. Mm. Fake it. You've got to be able to stand up mm. tall. Yeah. When you start to allow him to rule roost, you give him so much power and control that he becomes abusive with it because mm. he doesn't know what to do no. with it. And you put yourself in a very... You put yourself in the victim position, OK, where he will grow up because he's doing it now with no respect. Yeah. And if you think you've got a problem now, yeah, I don't worse. even want to imagine. No I, don't. no. I don't even want to imagine what it would be like in two years' time. Neither do I. You know, right now, his school's suffering, and this is a time that's incredibly important. You know, the little brains are like sponges, oh, God, taking yeah. everything yeah. in. And a, and a great, wonderful time for him to really develop his social skills as mm. well and enjoy for him to have play you know, play dates and friends around and you to go to friends' house for coffees, mm. for him to behave in a manner that you know is acceptable, that he can go off to other family members yeah. and you can go out for a night yeah. or for an afternoon or do your job, you yeah. know, and, and do what you desire to do. Mm. That's healthy. But you, you've got to let go. Yeah. And you've got to allow your sister to be able to help you to do that. Otherwise, things will get worse. Yeah. I know. So what are the top three priorities that need to change? Apart from just saying no and following through, what are the three issues that you have right now with Arthur that you need to get a grip on and learn how to follow through on? Um, apart from, obviously, no. Um, it is to let go, to let him make the choices, to let him, you know, learn right from wrong. Um, and to let... I mean, he is very independent. That's what everybody says about him. He is very independent and he will do it for himself, but allowing him to do it. Let, like you say, letting go. You're smothering him, modicoddling him because you have no outside activities, because you're not preoccupied in a relationship yourself mm. or with your friends or work colleagues and you're pandering to him. Mm. All right, there's nothing wrong with him jumping into bed on a Saturday morning, mm. you know, yeah. and, and having those cuddles. But he, he needs to learn as part of his own reassurance and self-comfort yeah, how to sleep in his own bed. Mm. Would you take your sister's help so that you could ever follow through on the stay in bed technique with him? I would like with Jane much, yeah. to come round, OK? Mm. and be in your bed with you so that your son <laughs> cannot be in your bed, OK? Mine don't get a chance and, to get in mine. <laughs> and follow through yeah. with that technique, yeah. all right? Yeah. You have to teach him how to behave properly. You have to show him what is acceptable, what isn't. Mm. You cannot allow him to rule roost at home no. because what he's learning under his own roof, he's taking to school. Ooh, yeah. And I have to sit here. It is not a teacher's job to do your job. No. This is their job to educate your children. It's, it's not their... They have enough pressure mm. Mm. to be the best mother that you can be for your son. It means that you need to do what's yeah. necessary. Even though you don't like to do it, understand why it's important yeah. to do it yeah. and the reasons why you've chosen not to. Mm. Do you feel you can do it? Uh, well, yes, because otherwise I wouldn't, you know... It has knocked my confidence and, you know, positivity, but I know I need to turn it round. That's, you know, obviously why I need to know the right way to do it, to put things right. 
Jane, where are you? Are you right <laughs> well, by her side? I'm there, aren't I, for the next few nights. What could you um, ask for? He won't, you know, yeah. He won't, the expert. He won't, come in, he won't come in bed when I'm there. I don't think he'll dare come in bed when I'm there. At least after that, when I go home. But if you stay in four days and we think we'll crack it, and, it, and it, we're working, he'll stay there. Yeah. Be strong. Look, you've, the, the marvellous thing is, is, that, is that you you have your sister. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you have your sister to draw that strength from. Yeah. Okay, to carry on with the techniques for sleeping. Okay, during the day, I think it's really, really good that if you are around, you know, when Arthur is misbehaving, that you don't step in. Don't rely on your sister. No. Don't lean no. on your sister. Show that strength and just know that she's silently there to support you. Yeah. She's your cheerleader. Yeah. You know, she's there for yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Okay? Yeah. Make a difference. Turn this around. Yeah. You know, I know you want to be... I know you want to be I the do. best mother you can. I do, yeah. They, they know that it's going to take from you the follow-through. Yes. Okay? And then please come back and tell me... How you are sleeping <laughs> in your own bed? Because that I do want to hear. And how okay. you're going out. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, having exactly. a bit of freedom. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to thank the families I've met today for speaking so honestly, and thanks for watching. Take care.